Good morning, C3 City Light. I'm Gariel Da Silva, and I'm gonna be your host for today. We wanna know you, so please drop a comment right here on the box with your name and where you're watching from. We would love to connect with you, get together, because I know we're doing it online on Sundays, but we also have dinner parties and party and city groups where we would like to meet you, get to know each other, but most importantly, get connected with our Lord, right? So if you want to find out more info about that, if it's your first time joining, so we want to welcome you as well, please go ahead and check our website, c3citylight.com, click that link, connect, so that way you can be closer to um, this beautiful family, which is City Light Church. Now, I'm about to give you a special date that you must save on your calendar. Okay, you ready? So, October 18th, October 18th, yes sir, and yes ma'am. Wait, what's that? Oh, what's gonna happen that day? <laughs> okay, let me tell you. We are joining one of our local churches that we partner with. That's gonna be North Park Church. We're gonna get together at Riverbend Middle School at 10 a.m. Oh my gosh, how exciting is this? We're gonna be all together as a family. You're my family, I'm your family, we their family, we all family, right? So, River Bend Middle School at 10 a.m. We're getting together with our partner church, North Park Church. We would love to see you there. Bring your mask, if you forget it, no worries, we gotcha. No, mask required, thingy thingy. We're gonna have social distance, but most importantly, we're gonna be all together. Bring a chair as well. That'll be very nice. Or a blanket, or you can stand all the time. No, I'm just kidding. We don't want you to stand all day. But for the kiddos, we do have activities. So it's gonna be a beautiful Sunday, a beautiful time for everybody. Now, we are getting closer to or actually we got to the point where we're gonna pray for um, our offerings. But first, let me read this quick verse which we can find in Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tide into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. God is saying, test me in this. So with what you have, even if you think it's sometimes I, like we think it's not enough, but if you're giving it from your heart and you bring it into the house of the Lord, that's all he wants. He wants to see your heart, the heart that you're giving it with. And if he's saying, test me in this, hey, it's God who's saying it, right? So I'm gonna try it. And I'm telling you, those gates, those blessings are, are gonna pour into your life. So from wherever you're watching right now, I will ask you to bow your head, close your eyes, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for this day that we get together here as a church online. Thank you for these resources that um, allowed us to get together. And now that we're gonna give, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering, everybody, every heart, Lord, that is given um, to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, so you can use our platform, c3citylight.com, and also you can text 84321. Have you ever driven a car that was out of alignment? It's a very unpleasant experience. It can bounce and shake, especially if you get going fast enough. It can pull you to the right or to the left. That is a very tiny and kind of ridiculous example, but it serves my purpose. Here it is. That's what our lives are like when we, begin, when we live them 
and we're not aligned with God's purpose and mission for our lives. That's what it's like. Pull to the right, pull to the left, a little bumpy. It, it's obvious that we're not in alignment. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. As you discover that and you begin to align your life and decisions, your life will have so much more meaning and impact to it. God invites all of us to align our lives to his mission. Let me promise you this. You were not put on earth to live for yourself. God's so much bigger than us. And if it was left to us, we would probably aspire to make more money, retire early, play a bunch of golf, get a sailboat and spend four to five months a year at sea. Wait a minute. That's me. That's my plan. That's not your plan. Just kidding. But seriously, God did not create us just to live for ourselves. We were planned for God's purpose, and that's to shape and to serve God. Because we are created in His image and made for His mission, aligning our lives to His mission gives us the greatest sense of fulfillment and meaning we could ever have. Everybody has a mission in life that's given to them by God. Sadly, I'm convinced that most people never figure out what that mission is. Ephesians 2.10 says it like this, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You know what that means? It means that you're God's handiwork. He made you in a unique way. There isn't anyone else on the planet like you that can do what you can do. God made you for a certain mission, and in Jesus, He made you and created you to do good works. Here's the beautiful thing about it. Jesus invited us on His mission. In John 20, He says that as the Father sent Him, He's sending us into the world. In Mark, I believe it's Mark 8, Jesus says it like this. If you want to gain your life, you got to be willing to lose it. The greatest way to enjoy your life is to surrender to the purpose and mission of God. We don't want to simply exist on this planet. We don't want to just take up space. We want to be fully alive and fully live this life. And the only way we're going to be able to make that happen is if we discover God's purpose for our lives and align ourselves to it. Over the next month, we're going to study the book of Jonah. We're going to learn from his example on how to align our lives with God's mission. If you've ever struggled with figuring out what your purpose and your mission in life is, just sit tight because this series is really going to help you out. That's my promise to you. You know, in life, there's kind of like three ways you can learn. You can learn by explanation. Going to school, college, you hear instruction, it gets explained, you do it. So explanation. You can also learn by experience. Oh, wow, that stove is really hot. I should put on an oven mitt on my hand when I reach in to pull out a pan, right? Learn by experience. And the other one, the last one is example. Each of these are so important, but I want us to learn as much as possible from other people's examples. Why? Because some lessons are so painful because of the consequences of those poor decisions. They really hurt. I would rather learn those lessons by looking at someone else's life, look at their example, and then do the opposite. And that's basically what we're going to do through this series. We're going to look at Jonah's example and learn from it. Now, Jonah in the Bible, it's called a minor prophet. It's one of 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament. Now, it's not called a minor prophet because it's not important. It's called a minor prophet because it's a short book. In fact, it's only four chapters. Each week, we're going, to choose, we're going to pick one chapter, and we're going to study it and look at it. And as we do that, we're going to begin to learn how to get our life aligned with the mission of God, what God's purpose is for us. So turn with me to Jonah, chapter 1. We'll pick up on verse 1. Here we go. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. The first thing we see here, right from the beginning, from the first verse, is this. Point number one. 
God's purpose will come from his word. This is why we emphasize here at C3 City Light, we emphasize this to make a big deal about this every day. We want to daily engage scripture reading. Every single day we want to get into God's word. Why? Because if you want to know God's will for your life, you'll find it through his word. The primary way that God speaks to us is from his word. Yes, we've got the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. But I'm telling you, there's absolutely no substitution for the word of God in your life. And without getting into God's word, we'll miss God's will, his purpose, his mission. We'll miss it. And so God tells him, hey, go to Nineveh, preach against it. It was very clear what God wanted Jonah to do. And this, sadly, is my favorite part of the story. I don't know why. Uh, the verse says, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed toward Tarshish. Like we kind of need a geography lesson for this to make sense. Jonah's hometown was here. And Nineveh was about 500 miles east of that. It's where modern day Iraq is. So he goes south a little bit, goes to Joppa, and there just happened to be a ship there. I'm saying Satan wants to make it easiest for us not to follow Jesus. There just happened to be a boat there. So he's there. He sells 2,500 miles away to Tarshish. That's where modern day Spain is. The exact opposite location of where God called him to go. Why? Why run? It was so far away. It was the opposite direction. Why? Leads me to point number two. Unresolved pain will keep you from your purpose. Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. They were enemies of Jonah. They were enemies of Israel, Jonah's people. They had conquered and conquested for years, defeating Israel. Now, Nineveh was a booming metropolitan. It was the capital, but it was a cruel city. It was a brutal city. It was very wicked. Because the Assyrians at that time, they were kind of like the Nazis back in World War II. Like they were like the Nazis of that day. They destroyed everything in their path. They treated everyone else with just racial prejudice. We're just wrong to people that didn't look like them. The Assyrians had captured, dominated, enslaved the Jews through so many different battles and different times. And so the Assyrians hated Israel. And guess what? The feeling was mutual. Israel hated Assyria. They were moral enemies. They were political enemies. They were religious enemies. They were racial enemies. They did not like each other. But Jonah knew something about God. He knew the character and the nature of God. He knew that God was merciful. He knew that if the people of Nineveh, if they repented, God would forgive them. The pain that Jonah had experienced, whether it was firsthand from, or from his family and friends or just his people group, the Israelites, it was real. It was a real pain. That pain was so real that he didn't want Nineveh to be restored, but he wanted it to be destroyed. We see this from Jonah 4 too. He knew God would forgive the people of Nineveh. That's why he was mad. But listen, we all have pain. It could be the pain of something someone did to you. Maybe someone did you wrong. Maybe it was something so traumatic that happened to you that it, was, it is incredibly difficult for you to get through it. It could be the pain of other people just not understanding what you're going through. It could be the pain or the fear of worry about what's about to happen next. If I leave and go do what God's called me to do, what's going to happen? Look, whatever pain you're experiencing in life, it's real. I'm not trying to diminish that. It's real. It did happen. It did hurt you. But here's my promise to you, that holding on to that pain is not worth sacrificing the plan and purpose and promise of God for your life. It's not worth, it's not worth not aligning your life to the purpose and plan of God. Jonah 1 verse 4. Let's pick up here. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. Such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break apart. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo over into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. Are you kidding me? All right. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up. Call upon your God, and maybe he will take notice on us so that we do not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who's responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and it fell on Jonah. 
So they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Verse 9, he answered, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. And they asked, what have you done? Because they knew that he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. That is a crazy story. Jonah disobeys God and his disobedience is greeted by a serious storm. That leads us to point number three. God can and will get your attention. Have you ever noticed that God is really good at getting our attention? At some point, when every door seems like it's shutting right in your face, you're like, oh, maybe God doesn't want me to be here. Maybe God doesn't want me going down this path. And God tells Jonah to go. He says, go. And Jonah defiantly says, no. God sent great winds and a violent storm started. You know things are bad when the seasoned sailors, these guys spend their life on the sea, they're worried and scared. It's like being in an airplane. I don't get worried about flying with turbulence. Only time I panic is when I see the flight attendants panic. And if they're scared and not calm, then uh-oh, it's going down. It's kind of what Jonah's like. He's asleep, but these guys are worried to death. You know, one translation says, not strong when it says opposing wind. Can you relate to that? I can have you ever felt like you were just trying to make it happen? Just make something happen for your life. You're trying, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. But then it just doesn't happen. No matter what you do or how hard you try, it just seems like there's this invisible force, like this opposing wind opposing you and keeping you from moving forward. You want it to happen, but God doesn't want it to happen. There's an opposing wind coming against you. What is the opposing wind that you're feeling right now? I mean, right now, this week, you go, man, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to get this done, but I just feel like I'm facing opposition. Just, it's not happening. Why does God allow opposing wind? You ever wondered that? I think it's because God's like, hey, I don't want you going in that direction. Do you realize that God's love for you is so strong? that he will get involved in your affairs to steer you back on course. You can try to run, but let me promise you this, you cannot outrun God's love. In verse 11, the sea was getting rougher and rougher. They asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? You know why the sea was getting rougher and rougher? Because Jonah was still running. The storm's getting worse. The waves are getting rougher. They're getting higher. The winds are blowing more. How much rougher do things need to get in your life before God gets your attention and you allow him to correct your course? How much rougher does your marriage, your job, your relationships have to get before you wake up and realize, I need to change something here. God loves you just the way you are. But he loves you way too much to let you stay that way. Because you're not where you could be. You're not where he designed you to be. What he made you to be, the potential that you have to become and to be. If you feel like you're going through a storm right now, like you've got opposing winds, rough seeds, I, I just want to encourage you to surrender. Peace is on the other side of getting your plans aligned with God's plans. Maybe you've never asked yourself this question, but today's a good day to ask. What's your mission and purpose in life? Have you ever taken the time to ask the one who created you that question? I want you to take some time exploring that. If you feel like everything's going against you, like every door is getting shut in your face, there's just some invisible force, you're just, it's just coming against you. I want you to go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to ask him, hey God, is there something in my life that I need to surrender? Is there a purpose and a plan that you're inviting me to seek you, get closer to you, to get into your word and to ask you, God, what is your plan for my life? What do you want me to do? You've invited me to be on mission, on a purpose, serving with you, Jesus. What is that purpose? 
Our life is so much bigger than what we can see. Our life is so much more important than what we wear, what we drive, how much money is in our account. Our lives are all going to be gone. The Bible says it's like a vapor in the wind. Here today, gone tomorrow. And maybe you live for 80 years, 100 years online, but in the grand scheme of eternity, that's like this. Life is way too precious and way too short to live for ourselves. We want to live for God. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the creator of our lives. He knows what he put inside of us. He knows we're his workmanship. He knows how he uniquely created us. And there's giftings and talents inside of you that you can discover, develop, and leverage that to transform somebody's eternity. I'm not saying money is a bad thing. I'm not saying having a nice car is a bad thing. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that the talents and the gifting that God's given you outside of understanding his purpose and his will, you'll live for yourself instead of leveraging what he's given you and blessed you with for his glory, for his good, for the good of others, and ultimately for your good. The most satisfying and fulfilling place on life, in life that you can be is when you're surrendered to the purpose of God in your own mission and own plan with Him. I want to invite you through this series to align your life, your plans, your mission with God's. Let's pray. God, none of this makes any sense without knowing you. It's through a personal relationship with you that we realize we've been made new, that we've been created We've been saved by grace and through faith. We need you, God. You created us. We're your workmanship to do good deeds, good works. Jesus, if anyone's watching this and doesn't know you, through the power of your spirit, touch their heart. Give them courage. Give them boldness to click the prompt right now to get prayer from one of our team members. We want to see them be everything you died for them to be. For every person, God, that feels lost, that kind of feels wayward, that feels like they're just, every door is being shut in their face. I pray that they would do a little self-examination, a little evaluation of where they're at and discover what their purpose is, what your purpose for their life is, God. And that through a response to that of just surrendering, God, here I am, use me. That you begin to align their life with your plan for their life. God, use the storms that we're facing to align us to your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, here's a couple discussion questions to help you unpack and process what you just heard. Question number one, have you ever felt God adjusting your path to help align you to his purpose? Take a second, you can journal that, you can write that out. If you're at a house party, talk through it with the discussion leader, all right? You can press pause, take your sweet time to think through, dive into this question. And when you're ready, press play. Here's question number two. What do you think is your God-given purpose? What is it that you were on this planet to accomplish?